What is up guys? My name is Dosif Hussain and today we're talking about five tips to instantly take your mobile photography game to the next level. So without further ado, it's time to level up. Oh wait, but first, gotta open this package. Okay, so the next tip we're gonna talk about is lighting. Now, any pro photographer that you talk to or anybody who knows what they're doing are gonna tell you that lighting is literally integral to any photo or video. Now, this is not only exposing your shots correctly, but lighting can also be used creatively. For example, if you want shadows in certain aspects of your photo, or let's say you want to emphasize certain aspects of your photo, then you can use lighting for that. Now. For this, you don't necessarily have to go out and buy like the most expensive lighting or or even lighting in the first place. Honestly, you could make do with window light. I mean, take this video for example. Most of the shot is being lit by the sunlight outside. I literally just waited until 7 p.m. today just so I could film because I know that's when the sun is like right behind the houses in front of my house and like it, it, it gives us nice diffused light um, into my window. So I know this is the time where my room looks the best. That's why I try to film at this time or I film at like 5 a.m. in the morning. So all I'm trying to say is try to use your window light for your shots or for your videos and honestly it's gonna give you really good results. A bonus tip is let's say you're traveling or you're going out to a location then try to keep the most scenic areas for around sunrise or sunset or when there's a lot of cloud cover and the sunlight is diffused. Uh, diffused? diffused and diffused. So for example, if I shoot this product literally just in my room, you can see how the lighting plays an impact on the actual photo. Whereas now, if I was to move this product closer to the window, get the light hitting it from a certain angle, and then I decide to take a photo, oh yeah, that's juicy. Okay, tip number two. Uh, when you get to a location, or let's say you're shooting a product, Get there and think to yourself, how would any average person or what would anybody else do when they get to that location with this picture? Uh, then take that thought and crush it up and just throw it in the garbage because you don't want to do the exact same thing everyone else is going to do. Don't be afraid to experiment with your shots. Get down on the floor, take the camera high up, uh, use some props, put it behind different items, try to change up the angles. Put your phone out, gotta hit them angles. Because you don't want the same angle that everyone else is shooting at. That's tip number two. Side tip to this, if you're shooting portraits, then try to shoot the person from below them because it makes the person look more flattering, it shows them more powerful, whereas if you shoot the person from above them, uh, then it gives the, it makes the person look smaller and, and weaker. Uh, so that's, that's a side note. The third tip that I wanna talk about is don't be afraid to use the different modes and features on your camera. Get to know them. Honestly, majority of the people will literally take their phone out at any location and they'll just swipe up into the camera and then they will just take a picture with whatever mode, the standard mode that the camera opens in. Um, and honestly, that may not be the best mode for that moment, right? So try to play around and see what else your camera can do. Maybe there's another mode in there that can get you a much better photo uh, of that particular event or product. By knowing what your phone can do, you'll be much better equipped to take the right kind of photo at the right moment. So recently I was at a baseball game and I wanted to capture the moment to send to my family. So I pulled out my phone and I just went into the camera mode and it took a regular photo. But then I realized, um, man, this, this is the same photo that everybody else in my row or everybody around me was taking, right? And I, and I wasn't able to capture the moment and it just didn't look the same. So I got to thinking and I was like, huh, Maybe this is the perfect time to try panoram pa panorama panorama mode. Uh, and I opened up panorama mode and this was like one of the first times I've used it to be quite honest. And I'm just like literally shooting it and I saw the end result and I was like, damn, this photo looks amazing, right? And, and honestly, I got a much more unique, much better looking picture that really gave an emphasis of the location that I'm in. The next tip that I wanna talk about is use apps to edit your photos rather than applying filters. Now, I know the easy thing is to just snap a photo or even take a photo with a camera, throw it onto Instagram and then just use whatever filter that comes on Instagram. Uh, however, try to be original, do something different, right? You want your photos to look different compared to everybody else, right? So rather than just slapping on a filter, try to edit your photos. Now you could say, Tosif, I, I, I don't know what the heck I'm doing in there, right? Well, 
honestly, that's half the fun of it, right? So when I started editing my photos, I had no idea what any of those, like, like it was just like straight lines and this like little, little uh, panel thingy that you just move back and forth. And I'm like, oh, what, what am I doing to my photos? But honestly, once you start playing around with it, you start understanding what each of the different settings do to the photo. And that's a lot of fun. As the saying goes, you never know how fun it is until you get on that horse. No, that, that, that's not a saying. I, t I totally completely made that up. But take a shot at it, try it out. You might have a lot of fun. One of the apps that I absolutely love using is Snapseed. It just gives you so many different options to edit your photo. So if you don't wanna go through the hassle of using Adobe Lightroom or Photoshop on your computer, or actually you could even use Lightroom on your phone, um, so, that's an option. However, Snapseed seems to work really well for me. So that's what I tend to use when I'm editing on my phone. If I'm editing photos on my computer, it's probably either Lightroom or Photoshop. And last but not least, tip number five is breathe. When you get to the location, don't just take out your phone and just start snapping pictures left, right, and center. Take a second compose the shot think to yourself okay what angles can i use here what props can i use here what can i put in the background or what can i put in the foreground how can i make the shot more interesting where's the light better in this particular location so these are all the things that you should consider before you just start snapping away and this kind of ties in all the previous four tips that we discussed and it's just to help you compose the shot and to think of the shot before you actually take it so I was just gonna do my outro right now, but I realized I have to help a friend shoot a video. So let's do my outro in a much better looking place. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. There were just five carefully crafted tips to take your smartphone photography to the next level. Um, and if you found this video beneficial, then make sure you go ahead and crush that like button. It really helps out a lot. And if you like content around tech and gadgets, filmmaking tips and tricks and lifestyle, then make sure you go ahead and smash that subscribe button. And as usual, I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.